Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting up another Spoilpox Scrivener. I painted one a long time ago, but now I'm doing one for my own personal army. And apparently this is a hard to come by model as it is only sold in a uh, Age of Sigmar Battle Force box set. And anyway, I fully assembled the model and I primed it with Bright Touch General Purpose Grey Car Primer. And here are all the paints and stuff I used throughout the project. Uh, some I don't show how I use it, because uh, these are just all that I've used, some I don't show how, but that's not really relevant. And now with Eschen Grey, Grey Sear, and White Scar White, we're going to do the pre-coating. We're going to paint, paint the whole model in Eschen Grey as a dark color, then we'll take an airbrush with Grey Sear and spray downward in order to uh, create the dark and light values. Then we will take a dry brush and White Scar White, and we'll dry brush all over the model pretty well to pick out all the little nicks and details here and there. And now with Lauren Force, diluted with Lamian Medium into a wash. Um, basically, I added Lamy and Medium until it was the right thickness consistency, and then I applied it all over the model. And it really worked well with the pre-coating we did. And now with Viridian Hue and French Ultramarine, I created a mix of this to create a wash with, and I used uh, mineral spirits in order to dilute it into liquid. I added colors together until I got a darkish green, and once I created the wash, I then applied this all over the model once. Then I used a makeup sponge and wiped off all the excess. Then I went back and applied a second coat of the wash on the, I don't know how to describe it, the underside of his mouth. Yeah. Alright, now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, Golem and Flesh, Magos Purple, and Lamian Medium, we're going to add some color and depth to the model. I originally was going to do some highlights, but it came out so well because of the pre-coating that it's not necessary. Alright, so with Skeleton Horde Contrast mixed with a little bit of Lamian Medium, uh, in order to dilute it, I applied it on like places where the flesh folds, uh, areas like that, uh, dark areas, or some areas like his uh, stomach, abs, or back his butts and stuff in order to create a yellowing, darkening, uh, places where his skin folds. And with Gullum and Flesh I did the same thing mostly on his butt and his stomach because it's ripped open so I wanted brown desic desiccated flesh. Before I've done it where I've done this colors with an airbrush right here, but in this case I wanted to try with a pure brush. And then I used Magos Purple on, well, his stomach where it was ripped out and created an interesting color. Wasn't the most ideal. I've done it better before, essentially, where his flesh was ripped apart. Alright, with Emperor's Children, Gullum and Flesh, Magos Purple, and Lamian Medium, and one color I didn't showcase here that I added in later was Pallid Witch Flesh. So I basically did his tongue, the big tongue. So basically I painted first with Emperor's Children and the inside of his mouth with it. Then I did a coat of Magos Purple diluted with Lamian Medium, but it was too thin so then I went and did a second coat, including the inside of his mouth. Once that was done, I then did a highlight layer of Emperor's Children, uh, as best I could figure where there were high points. Then I applied Gullum and Flesh, diluted with Lamian Medium to help it flow better, all over his tongue. Then I re-highlighted it again. But it wasn't bright enough yet, so then I took a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh, which is an off-white, it works pretty well, mixed it in with Emperor's Children, and then did a final highlight all over on the most prominent areas where light would be, and that was his tongue. And with Baneblade Brown, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Carrick Stone, and Screaming Skull, I did his teeth. So I started off with the darker color Baneblade Brown all over. And then I applied Skeleton Horde Contrast all over the teeth as well. Now he has gums and stuff, but the Skeleton Horde Contrast kind of covered that up and made it look as a dark brown, so it worked well, so I didn't have to do anything with the gums. Then I went back with Baneblade Brown and basically painted 90% of each tooth 
with Baneblade Brown, and only the darkest areas and the gums had the skeleton or contrast. Then I went with Carrick Stone and did fine lines along the most raised, most prominent areas. Some of the teeth have some easy giveaways where that is, but some don't. Then with Screaming Skull, I did very fine highlights on the most raised parts of his tooth, fine lines, and then the tips of his teeth. And that was his teeth. Alright, with Gene Stealer Purple, Magos Purple, Emperor's Children, and Lamian Medium, and I also went and got uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, I don't show it here, I show it later, but yeah, so basically I painted his uh, lips, yeah. So I started off with Gene Stealer Purple all over his lips, carefully not to screw up anything else. Then I covered it with pure Magos Purple, because I wanted the dark. Then I re-highlighted 90-95% of the entire thing with Gene Stealer Purple. Then I went and did a somewhat of a mix of Gene Stealer Purple and Emperor's Children, uh, sort of a 50-50-ish mix, and then I applied that all, like, covering, I don't know, 60-75%. It, it depends on each piece. Uh, you eventually develop an eye for this. Then after that, I did a little bit of pure Emperor's Children, but then I decided it wasn't bright enough, so I, then I took Palette Witch Flesh and mixed it with uh, some Emperor's Children. Now, I didn't do regular highlights. What I did was I basically touched it. I did a tiny little tap of a dot on the most raised prominent area to create sort of a light point on the lips. Very subtle, very small, but noticeable. Alright, with Steel Legion Drab, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Baneblade Brown, and Carrick Stone, I did his horns. Now, I tried a little bit earlier by applying Skeleton Horde Contrast on his spine, as well as his horns up top, but it wasn't that good. So, I coated them all in Steel Legion Drab, including his spine, and then I coated them all in a Skeleton Horde Contrast Pure. Which was a bad idea, I should have diluted a little bit with Lamian Medium because it clumped a bit, and so it kind of was a little difficult to work with and had some issues. Then I went back with Steel Legion Trap and basically painted 80 to 90 percent of each horn with it, including painting little fine little like strip lines from the horn onto his skin. Then I went with Baneblade Brown and painted like half of the horns, uh, getting more concentrated towards the tip and the edges of each horn. And then Carrick Stone on the very edges of each horn and little feathering patterns all along the horns. And this also applies to his spine. Uh, the Baneblade Brown was highlighting the edges of it, and then Carrick's one of the most fine points with little feathering strokes. Alright, with Carrick Stone, Seraph Sepia, and Screaming Skull, we're going to paint those scrolls that are in his stomach. Uh, also, he has a book on his back right... back? <laughs> on his back? Essentially painted the same way. So, Carrick Stone is a base color. Then Seraph Sepia is a reddish brown, and I applied it all over. Pure, by the way. And once that was done, I highlighted the entire things with Carrick Stone again, covering 80-90% to 90 of it. And then I did Screaming Skull on all the edges, as fine as I was able to, uh, the ridges, edges, and stuff like that, and it came out pretty well.
And now with Emperor's Children, Golem and Flesh, Lawman Medium, and I show it later, but I bring out the Pallid Witch Flesh. Uh, I don't know what, I guess what colors I'm going to use, and then I make changes later if things don't work out. But basically I'm going to paint his intestines. So, we're going to start off with Emperor's Children, base color. Then I'm going to get uh, Gilliam and Flesh mixed with a little bit of Lamian Medium to help it flow better and dilute it as much as we need, and apply it all over his intestines. Then I re-highlight with Emperor's Children, and I basically do this a few times. Gilliam and Flesh with Lamian Medium, Emperor's Children highlights, and doing finer and finer highlights. And then I get to the point where it's not bright enough. So then I take Pallid Witch Flesh and mix a little bit of it with the Emperor's Children until it's a bit brighter than the Emperor's Children, and then I do a very fine highlight, painting very thin lines on, as far as I can tell, are the high most raised areas and such, as best as I can guess. I mean, this thing is very tiny. Alright, with Rhinox Hide, Mordfang Brown, and XV88, we're going to paint this rope that he has around his belt. His waist. Yeah, this is a belt. So basically, we're going to paint the whole thing with Rhinox Hide. Very dark, noticeable color. Then we're going to highlight the strands of the rope with Mordfang Brown, which is basically we're just painting a diagonal line that the model makes it clear. And with XV88, we're going to paint a very thin line on the tip of it. More of a dot, even, in some cases, if you're able to do that. And it creates just a little highlight point. Alright, with Mornfing Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and XV88, I'm going to paint that, I don't know, like little sack he's carrying on his hip. So I want it to be different than the rope and stuff, so change the colors I use a little bit. So basically I paint it with Mornfang Brown, then dosed it in Agrax Earthshade. Then we highlight it, then dosed it again with Agrax Earthshade. Rehighlight it. Then I did some XV88 mixed with the Mornfang Brown, did a finer highlight along the edges and stuff, and painted like strip of lines along the upper half of the round bowl kind of thing and then in the very end I ended up uh, working my way up to pure XV88 and eh, it's not that good the transition of colors was not the best uh, could have been better but uh, this was probably one of the lower points in comparison to everything else Alright, back to these exact colors again, because apparently he has leather straps on his sword, so start off with Mornfang Brown, cover the whole, all the straps, then I douse it with Agrax Earthshade. Then I take a thin brush and I do basically edge highlighting uh, lightly, sort of like overbrushing, which is like halfway to dry brushing, along all the edges and stuff, creating the solid lines of color there. And then with XV88 doing some edge highlighting and sort of overbrushing on the most raised areas as best as I'm able to pick out. Alright, with Averland Sunset and a .25mm micro pen, and I don't show it here, but I show it later, Seraph Sephia. I paint his third eye. So basically, fill the eye with Averland Sunset. Then, once it dries, or with a hair dryer, use the micro pen to paint a line up and down to create the eye or the pupil. Then, with the Seraph Sephia, I apply it into the eye once the pen has dried, and then drain a little bit so that it creates sort of like a reddish color towards the lower half of the eye. Alright, with Eschen Grey and Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to paint the stone that he's standing on. Basically, Eschen Grey all over, and a thick layer of Agrax Earthshade, or a pure Agrax Earthshade on it, and that's it. Alright, and with Kalidor Sky, Hoeth Blue, and Baharoth Blue, I'm going to paint his pen. So basically what it is, I base the whole thing in Kalidor Sky. Then I take Hoeth Blue, and I basically paint each of the little feather thingies all throughout. Then I take Baharoth Blue and I apply this on a thin line on the... Yeah, basically redo what I do with Hoeth Blue, but basically painting like 50 to 60 percent of what I painted, painted with Hoeth Blue. And uh, that was it. Now 
Now with Eschen Gray, Dawnstone, and Administrative Gray, I'm going to paint the quill of his pen. Basically, Eschen Gray is the base color, Dawnstone is a medium, and Administrative Gray is a thin highlight a line along the most raised areas on the tip. And now with Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown, and XV88, we're going to paint the round thingy on his pen. So basically, basically a Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown covering 90% of it, all the details, and XV88 thin lines along the most raised areas and most prominent things. Alright, with Screaming Skull, XV88, and Seraph Sepia, we're going to paint his giant parchment paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply one layer of Screaming Skull, a bit watered down. Now, it's actually going to be a little bit uneven, translucent even. You can actually see the pre-coating underneath it a bit, the grays here and there. Uh, that's fine. Uh, also, don't forget that he has uh, his, his, his pen hand has some paper as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the XV80 and we're going to paint all these little symbols and things that he has on his paper with it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take pure serif sepia and then just apply it all over now because it's not treated with lamian medium it's going to be a little uneven in its coverage like a little spiderly and stuff and i'm going to apply it all over make sure it's a good layer but not too thick and make sure it doesn't pull anywhere and then once that's done i'm going to go back with screaming skull and i'm going to overbrush which is close to dry brushing but overbrushing and then the randomness of the grains of the brush and stuff uh, scraping along it will create the unevenness and oddness of like parchment paper and stuff so it's not meant to be clean it's meant a lot of these layers are meant to be uneven and stuff in order to create a paper like look and then I re-highlighted all the brown symbols with XV88 on their most raised areas and stuff for a simple highlight Alright, with Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown, and XV88, I'm going to paint his nails. So, we'll start off with a base layer of Rhinox Hide. And with Mournfang Brown on his toenails, we're going to paint solid lines, uh, like a top line going along the top crest and then two on the side. And for his little fingernails that he has, I'm going to paint like 80 to 90% of it this uh, in the center of it. Then with XV88, I'm going to paint very thin version of the lines on his toenails, uh, like the Mournfang Brown, just filling in the Mournfang Brown to create the point. And then with his fingernails and stuff, I'm just going to paint like half of what I did with the Mournfang Brown to create the little highlight dot. And now with Hoeth Blue and Drakenhof Nightshade, I basically paint the little uh, Nurgling. Paint him blue, add the shade, re-highlight all over. It's just simple and quick and easy and done. Now I did do a few other details, his teeth, his eyes and stuff, but it's the same, and his horn, but it's the same I've done on the big guy, so it's like not worth mentioning here. Alright, so with Screaming Skull and Seraph Sepia, we're going to paint the maggots he has. He has some on his right foot and on his mouth. So we're going to paint them all with Screaming Skull. Then we're going to paint them with Pure Seraph Sepia to create the darkness. Then we're going to just paint thin lines of highlights along them to create the well, highlight all along them. I quickly took some Jean Steeler purple and just painted the veins on his mouth as well as he has some on his neck. Alright, with Best Decor Flesh and Fugan Orange, we're going to paint the boils he has. So we're going to start off with a layer of Best Decor Flesh all over his boils and stuff scattered throughout. Then we're going to take Fugan Orange and just apply it all over. Then we're going to re-highlight the boils again with Best Decor Flesh, and that's it.
And now with all the non-metals done, we take AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and apply it all over. Alright, with Vallejo Acrylic Metal Color, the Copper, Exhaust, and Dura Aluminum, I end up not using the Agarac Star Shakes, it looked fine. So basically what I do is I take the Exhaust Manifold, which is a dark metal, and I paint all the metal pieces. The little emblem hanging off his stomach, the uh, pieces of metal that are on his, uh, whatever it is, the scroll. And, yeah, and then I fill a lot of them with copper, the emblem in the center are filled with copper. I put a little copper on the Nurgle symbol that's on his paper. Then I do take Dura Aluminum and I paint thin highlight lines on the edges, put us sharp bits on the exhaust manifold, and that's it. And then with Rhizo Rust and Nehalok Oxide, I can finally pronounce that, we uh, just add a little bit of detail to the metal. So I'm going to start with the Oxide and just apply it sparingly here and there along all the metal and stuff to create like, well, the oxidation. Then with Rhizo Rust, once again, sparingly apply it little bits, dots, here and there on the metal just to add some character to it. I then fully assembled the model using super glue and then attached it to my usual base for my army. Alright, with Blood for the Blood God and Liquitex Gloss Varnish, I'm going to add this final detail. So with Blood for the Blood God, we're going to apply this sparingly along the edges of his ripped open stomach here and there, uh, around the paper and stuff. We just want it very sparingly. Well, I want it sparingly. And then with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, I apply a little bit of water to dilute it a little bit, and then I apply it on his tongue and his open intestines and stuff, and his boils as well to get them to shine. And that is it. And done. All right, it actually looks really, really good. I'm quite surprised at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then, so that was an interesting model kit. This is the second one I painted. The first one I sold a long time ago because I just had it. And uh, this one I painted up freeze for my own personal army, although I may never use him because uh, the models I do have I basically go uh, great on clean one heavy since I have three of them and so not really much space for him because I need everyone to fight contribute because as strong as they are they don't they can't be everywhere so anyway um, apart from that this model came out actually really good so he's for my personal army so I went the extra mile and then some to make him fit in but also to add his own character and stuff and there's a lot of detail in this model there is a lot and he's apparently very hard to get, as you can only buy him from the uh, starter set for Age of Sigmar now, even though he can be in 40k. It's like, I could not find him, him to buy him individually. That's pretty interesting. Uh, might be a bad sign for this model in the future. But as far as it goes, uh, looking at it all, the Nurgling stands out as being worse. <laughs> Doggone it. But overall, like, uh, the deep dark to very bright light works very well his uh so originally i was going to paint his skin with more highlights and stuff but the pre-coating went so well and the color of lauren forest went so well i wanted him to be a more blue-ish i wanted him to be noticeably different than the rest of the plague bearers and stuff like that and so his skin is a bit different but wow it was a big deal this went out pretty pretty well i was quite surprised actually um, yeah, uh, he came out very, very well. Uh, I took a lot of work, a lot of time. Footage-wise for this video was like two and a half hours brought down to whatever it is now. Uh, and yeah, so it was a fun, interesting project. I did him relatively quickly because I want to speed to the next thing. So he's for my personal army. He looks pretty cool. I like his skin. 
Yeah, I go over a few details here and there because there was a lot of them. But yeah, uh, it looks good. Yeah, as far as rating him, I would probably say just a nine, just barely a nine out of ten for all the stuff I wanted to do, all the stuff I was able to fulfill, his overall appearance, the flow, the model, and stuff like that. Colors work pretty well. I would say, yeah, like a nine out of ten or. A, 8.9 just barely just barely getting to a 9 on my best work quality but nothing super above and beyond that could bring it to a 10 that I can see I can't think of how to make it a 10 apart from getting the nurgling to be better uh, I don't know what could take it to beyond there's a lot of things a lot of small details I did really well and brought it up well Alright then, so that's the end of that, so like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, share if you want to share it, and really cool model coming up next.